Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I've got a project for you we're going to be working on today. This is again related to our steam locomotive. Uh, if you've been watching my channel and keeping up with what's going on, we've been working for a little while doing a steam pipe repair that goes up in the smoke box of the locomotive. Pretty much got that finished, knocked out, ready to go back into the locomotive. But while we're up in the smoke box working, now is a good time for us to go ahead and finish machining and installing another part that goes up in that area kind of unrelated, but kind of related at the same time. And a while back, I had a casting made. This is the casting. And what this is, is this is gonna become an exhaust nozzle uh, that basically will take the exhaust steam uh, after it goes through the steam engines, it goes up through a, the, the smoke box there. It creates a draft in the smoke box when that exhaust shoots up through there. Right now, there's a little pedestal that kind of comes up in the smoke box. And in the top of that, there's a machined area for a nozzle to fit down inside. This nozzle basically constricts that steam. It kind of goes up through a funnel. Uh, creates a little bit more power, and that creates more draft in the locomotive. Our locomotive was missing this part. It has not had it in I don't know how long. Uh, the David King, who works out at the museum, says that uh, there used to be one in there when they did a boiler uh, upgrade to that locomotive back in the mid-90s. Uh, in that process, this piece somehow was lost, disappeared, whatever, and been needing to replace it. Problem was, was we didn't know exactly how it needed to be made. I mean, we had an idea, we kind of knew what it looked like. We probably could have guessed at it. But in the process of working on our steam pipe issue, we were able to acquire a, an original blueprint of a smoke box on a Vulcan locomotive similar to ours. Now ours, this, this blueprint is for, it's the same model locomotive as we have from the same manufacturer. It was just a little bit larger version of it. So the, the, the dimensions were wrong but the part was there. And from that, we were able to take and actually scale it down to fit our locomotive. And uh, my good buddy, Charles Marlin, who does a lot of my CAD work, uh, actually drew this part up for us. We got it properly designed for our locomotive, uh, again, based, based off of uh, the original drawings uh, and so on. From that, we were able to develop uh, a 3D model for patterns to have them cast. And uh, these are the patterns that we used, and these were just 3D printed. Uh, and we have the positive mold, this is the core box. Basically what you're looking at is the black here became the, uh, the steam pipe ring. This uh, yellow part was a solid core that went through it and made that inside hollow so we didn't cast it solid. So once that was done, we sent the patterns off uh, to a foundry, and voila, here is our casting. This is the raw casting. What we got to do today is get this machine so that it can go back in the locomotive. And a pretty simple job, I think. Basically, we got a, a straight, that's gonna go in a straight machining on the inside here. We have to bore that out to a certain size. And then down in the bottom, it's actually bored at a taper. And then on the outside here, there's gonna be a little uh, machined area that's gonna fit down in that notch. So we'll have to machine that surface out. So let's get over here on the lathe and uh, get started making this part. I got my part chucked up here in the lathe and uh, right now everything's a rough casting you know, surface so there is no machine, machine surface. I've kind of turned this thing around and tried to get it in here where I've got the least amount of run out. Uh, and we're gonna be machining surfaces so again, it's not a big deal if we do have a little bit of shakiness here but it's run, actually running pretty true. This casting is pretty round which is nice to have a good casting to start with. Uh, I'm going to start by just doing an inside bore on this front side here. We're just going to get that cleaned up. Then I'll flip it around. We'll grip it from the inside here to hold it. and We'll machine the rest of it on the other side. Uh, but this just seems to be a good place to start. So what I'm going to do is we got to bore this out to two inches, two and three quarter inches. Yeah, checking my print real quick. Right now we're a little, a little under uh, two and a half inches. Uh, so we got a little bit of material to take out of there. Got a boring bar set up and uh, Get in here and touch off and get that going. All right, touching there. And let's go through there. Not quite cleaning all the way up right now on the first pass. That's all right though. I just took a little light pass. 
on a casting like this, I don't like to get too crazy on the first pass because you don't know if that inside is going to taper in or out and start hogging out a real heavy cut on the inside. So uh, I just started with about a 30 thousandths cut uh, just to kind of smooth it up. From here, you know, I, I may not, still may not get a complete solid cut on the next cut, but at least I know I'm not going to be hogging anything. So, but just be safe. I'm going to go with a 50 thousandths cut this pass. A little bit heavier. And that might be clean enough the whole way. Surface finish looks all right. And so right now we are measuring about two inches, 440 thousandths roughly. So we got to get a bit of take on out. Let's get this uh, machine now. A little bit heavier cut, 60,000 cut this pass. Sounds like it's machining just fine. We got about 15 thou to go. I'm gonna do another 10. Probably make a spring pass there on that last pass. This inside measurement is not critical by any means. So uh, probably just gonna do that, and whatever it ends up at, it's gonna be within a few thousands. So uh, Again, this is just an opening for steam to pass through, so there's no, no precision fit in here at all. All right, the spring pass, this is gonna finish it, whatever it ends up as. Take my pressure off, back out, so we don't drag back through there. And let's just see where we are. Well, I am, I don't know if I can pull that out without messing it up or not, but 749,000, so a thousandth under my target. I'm gonna be happy with that. Like I said, it's just not a, not a critical measurement, so. Uh, all right, while I got it in here, I'm gonna just face the top of that just so that I have a nice surface that I can butt up against something if I want to. Uh, I'm just taking a little bit off at a time and until I get it to clean up the whole way around. That sounded like it might've cleaned up all the way there, let's see. Yeah, it's fine. Now I'm just going to come in here and just break that inside uh, edge so I don't have a sharp corner in there. And that's all we need. All right, that feels good. And with that, I think we can take her out and turn her around. warm. Thing's hot as a firecracker, but we're going to go ahead and right, come in here and face the bottom. Doing this by hand. 
feeding it by hand. That sounded like it cleaned up. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is cut this outside diameter down to the proper size, which is uh, three and 3.375, five, three and three eighths. Uh, and it needs to go an inch and a half deep on here. So I'm gonna just uh, use my scale. We'll come in here and just put a mark. Again, this depth is not really critical, but uh, I wanna get it close. There we go, that gives me a mark to work off of. And let's just get a rough idea of where we're starting at. This is, I can't remember what we made the pattern, but uh, so we're about 3.825. We need to be at 375. So we got a good bit of material to come off of there. I went in 50 thousandths from uh, wherever we started from, but you can see just the irregularities in the casting. I'm not taking that much of a pass this time. But that's all right, we'll get it all cleaned up. All right guys, I had a viewer suggest a little trick when you're doing this cast iron and bronze and stuff where it's really just spraying chips up on you. So take a little piece of scotch Brite and just put on there and that'll kind of catch those chips. Uh, hey, I'm gonna give it a try. It sounds like a pretty good idea. Uh, Cause I don't like those chips flying up in my face. Let's see how that works. Wow, much better. Good measurement now that everything's cleaned up. And we're on 750 thousandths. Going to 375. So we got 25 more to go. Now guys, this is fitting down inside of that um, little jet nozzle coming up out of the locomotive. That piece was machined over 100 years ago. I know that I measured it just with some calipers. It's 375. Um, it's, this piece just needs to fit down in there. There's a set screw that holds it in place. So I'm actually gonna machine this about 5,000 undersize. I want it to fit down in there without any problems. I don't know if there's anything down in that hole that kind of has made it become out of round or anything like that. So anyway, we're gonna shoot for a little bit undersize on this. Like I said, I think I'm gonna shoot for 370, uh, which will give me about 5,000 under. So let's get a quick check here. And right now, yeah, so we got about, about 26,000 that needs to come out of there. And this measurement, I'm not gonna say is super critical. We want it to be in the ballpark, but uh, you know, if I'm, I got some, I got some wiggle room as long as it's under 375. You know, 375 minus 10 thousandths is probably, probably a good uh, tolerance for this part. So um, it'll probably be even greater than 10 thousandths. It just can't be larger than 375. But let's see where we're at now. right on 370 yeah I'm happy with that we're just gonna leave leave well enough alone all right let me get my boring bar set up and we got to cut this taper on the inside I got my boring bar set up again 
And on this one, we, we're wanting to do this at an 11 degree angle. So coming in at basically 11 degrees in this way, just a slight angle, it's gonna taper that up. And to do that, what I've done is I've rotated my compound over to 11 degrees, and we're gonna do this by just hand feeding in down here. And my goal here is more or less just to get this cleaned up on the inside. Uh, well, I'm probably gonna take a little bit more than that. I want it to kind of taper out somewhere up in, in just below where this collar is. Uh, it's not, again, not critical. Uh, we're just trying to reduce the diameter in there to create that jet effect with the steam coming out of the nozzle. So um, let's get in here and just start cutting. Start by getting a good clean cut all the way around. Again, we're cutting a rough casting right now, so we're an interrupted cut. Probably gonna be my last pass here. Leave just a little bit on the bottom. I don't want to turn it into a razor down there. And it's flaring out about to where the drawing says it should anyway, so. Uh, it. One exhaust blast nozzle coming right up. Well there you go guys, a quick little project and this has been a fun one. So we've gone from a blueprint to a pattern to a rough casting to a final finished part and uh, this has all been basically done right here in the shop. So anyway, We'll get this installed in the locomotive when we put the steam pipes in and uh, hopefully we'll have that locomotive up and going this weekend uh, for reopening of the museum after a little month break during the month of August uh, when they shut down each year. It's time for us to do maintenance on the locomotive and other things, so uh, project accomplished. Well guys, here we are in the locomotive and you can see again, you got the exhaust comes up from the two cylinders and it comes through this piece and kind of pulls them together. You got two different inlets and it joins them together. This uh, exhaust nozzle just kind of drops right down in that hole right there. And it basically takes the diameter of that pipe and just kind of constricts it down, which will increase the, the flow moving up through here, the velocity of the steam coming up. And uh, the smokestack is right above it up here. And that was what will help create draft inside the, the smoke box here to help the fire burn hotter. And I'm, there's a set screw on the side. I'm just gonna tighten this up and you can come in here and adjust this up and down to get your draft just right but we're going to start with it right there we may play around with it some once we get the get the locomotive going but that's it nice and simple drops right in place there you go thanks for watching guys that'll be a wrap as always uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you saw uh, comments are always welcome shoot me an email if you like uh, and uh, if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and with that Talk to you next time around. Thanks for watching.